you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brahma018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hi everyone, welcome back to another FIFA 21 Tactics video of the series where I show you how to recreate and adapt real life systems so that they will work in games. Ash here, aka Brahma18, and we are switching our focus today onto Riccio Pochettino's Paris Saint-Germain system. One that uh, I've really enjoyed watching since he did, um, of course, take over the reins a couple of months ago. It's one that um, has started to sort of settle down now and they're seeing a little bit more success. They've had a little bit of blips, particularly in the league, but um, in the Champions League, they're looking very, very good. Now, as is always the case with systems, you tend to find that there are always tweaks um, here and there. So sometimes he's played a 4-2-3-1, sometimes it's it's more of a 4-3-3 with more three flat central midfielders. Um, and there are tweaks here and there, different personnel. The one I've decided to go with is the one that I've enjoyed watching the most and also enjoyed playing with the most. And that is the one where we see Neymar take this more central role. We see Mbappe leading the line. You've got the two wingers on either side rather than the likes of, say, Neymar on the wing, Icardi up front. Um, this is the one we're really going with today. And so there will be some changes and tweaks of the instructions as we go. If you're new to this series, welcome along um, what we do here is i'll first of all i'll tell you any position changes which there are a couple um which we do make just to um to make it more more uh workable really in the game um, we then go through the tactics and i'll explain sort of what we do and also why we do it and how it replicates what they do in real life and then we will finish off with player instructions and i will suggest suitable players on the right hand side for you to sign if you're playing career mode for example uh, as always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more regular content and regular videos from this series. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, first things first, it is pretty much a 4-2-3-1, and you will go it, set it to the normal 4-2-3-1 wide. However, you'll notice it is a little bit different. And first things first, we're going to change both the wingers to left wing and right wing. And the reason why we do that is because it makes them much more active in the game, particularly when you're playing as a team like PSG, who are playing on the front foot, who are trying to get into their players into those advanced positions as often and as much as possible. Therefore, as a result, you'll find that when they play at wing, rather than at right and left midfield, they are far more active in the game. As, as right and left midfielders, they're a little bit more passive, a little bit more defensive. Here, you'll really see them penetrating the back line a lot more, and it's very, very handy. Likewise, with the fullbacks as well, we've changed these to right and left wing back. What it does, it just makes them get a little bit wider, create more width. They're pretty much on the touchline, and they'll get further forward as well, which is very, very important, not only for when in possession, but also to help complement this extreme gig and pressing style that we are going to talk about very very shortly so um, yeah you want to change these two to wingers and these two to wing backs a very very attacking and fluid formation indeed so uh, that's it for the position changes um, a quick note on the tactic really in general one that i did enjoy playing with as you'll see we had a lot of fun it was a bit of a mismatch uh, but we did just pick the second best team hot ratings wise in league uh, and that happened to be Lille, of course um, matching them in the league as of recording this doing very very well indeed um, it's a really enjoyable tactic um, and one that i think you guys are going to uh, enjoy playing with as well so let's talk about the tactics now and the system that is in place. So first off, we have constant pressure, and it's something that Pochettino has been known throughout his entire managerial career. He's got that sort of Bielsa um, influence. Of course, he did play under him, and it does show in the way his teams play. They have that gegen pressing, constant pressure, always looking to win the ball back. Obviously, it does impact on your stamina, which in this game is a little bit... Um, or inconsistent shall we say but very very um, difficult to uh, for opposition teams to play against very fun to play with as well so we have that on constant pressure defensive width we've moved this down to three and that means it will be a very narrow system particularly when you're only playing a four back it's a lot easier for teams on the game to play through you um, and you, you don't want them to do that you want to try and force them out wide 
put crosses into the box because then they're easier to deal with than if a team can just simply pass it through the middle. So we have this on a nice narrow three. Uh, we don't have it all the way down to one just because it gives your particularly fullbacks a little bit more leeway to get out to the crosser to the wide man when they need to so um, yeah just bear that one in mind with depth we have this all the way up to 10 now what we've usually done for anyone who is a regular watcher on my channel is we usually move this down to eight um, because what happens is it's still a high offensive defensive line but it will just mean that your defenders will back off a yard or two um, which is just to help combat the likes of over the top through balls and counter attacking through balls which are very overpowered on this game but you know this is a very extreme system and we are going to try and replicate it to the fullest and so obviously because you're trying to pressurize the opposition pretty much all the time you need as high a defensive line as possible to complement that because you're pressing them in any position you know they're playing it out from a goal kick and you're on them straight away you know so you have to have as high a defensive line as possible to combat that now of course if you are playing let's say in seasons or something or you're playing against a team um the ai who who have very fast attackers you might get undone um you know and that can happen but ultimately the benefits that you will reap you'll see us winning the ball back a lot on the gameplay um you know high at the pitch often you know so it, it beds into that and you you sacrifice something to to get a bit more from something else so we have this all the way up to 10. Moving on to offensively, possession, um, I mean, I, I rarely explain this to be honest, you'll sort of know how it works, they will try and, you know, show for passes in short lanes, um, and it's uh, it's pretty just a, the standard way of playing for these, these sort of high tempo, um, you know, possession based teams, isn't it? So we stick that on to uh, possession, and likewise with the whip, similarly how we have this one on free with defence, we also have it on free um, offensively as well when in possession, and for the same reason, you're just trying to complement that sort of short passing game, we'll have players, as you'll see when we come onto the player instructions, we move certain players onto getting behind, and that's how you have the emphasis on the counter attack, um, while still being able to, to play in a possession based manner, supporting with, with short runs easy movement um, to play quick and, and simple pass etc to work the ball at the field you've got that nice variation uh, but we will we will we'll talk about that more when we do uh, get on to the uh, player instructions with players in the box move this up to eight then you're looking for the real front four and if we go back onto the screen here you know you've got this sort of four attacking um, players I guess essentially um, who all should be looking to, to storm into the box as much as possible usually it will be a wing back crossing the ball in in which case you can then got four options um, to cross it into or to lay it off to so very very handy an attacking system and it is supplemented by that with free kicks and corners as we've always mentioned we move this up to four for both because then it leaves you um, we're still two to three men back um, you usually have two men back and one on the edge of the area but then you have another option in the box to cross to. So again, it just makes it um, a little bit more effective uh, and gives you a little bit more threat in those set piece situations, which is always very, very handy. Right, so that's it for the tactics. Uh, and now we're going to move on to the player instructions. And as I mentioned, if you are new to this series, what we do is we'll start off with the keeper um, and we'll work our way up the field and I'll suggest suitable players for you to sign uh, along the way. So, starting off with Kayla Noas, we have sweeper keeper. Obviously, you're looking to complement that high defensive line. So, he's an extra um, defensive outlet, essentially. Um, so, you know, he'll bring him out as much as possible. If he doesn't come out, obviously, you can use uh, hold down Y and, and you have that. So, that's very, very handy indeed. And with comes to crosses, we have him on comes to crosses. Uh, or saving on crosses, we have him on comes for crosses um, easy for me to say uh, again it's all about just having that active keeper they're taking less of a passive role because your team obviously um, is trying to play on the front foot and it also helps in game because it just relieves a little bit of pressure from you on in crossing situations on corners they'll often come out more um, and because they're relatively well protected on this game um, you get a bit of leeway as a result in those situations so very very handy with the centre-backs 
uh, you don't need to change anything here. Stay about while attacking for both of these. Very important that they do just retain their shape. Obviously, they're going to be um, well. They're going to have a lot of stress put on them with it being such a, a high, um, a high line uh, and only being two centre backs rather than three. Um, so a lot of stress put on them. They will get a bit of protection from the the two holding midfielders in front of them, of course. But ultimately, um, you know, you're going to want guys with uh, with high physical attributes, uh, a high physical upside. So um, you know, do just bear that in mind as well right on to the wing backs we'll go with next and they've both got the um the same instructions as you can see here and that is join the attack and overlap so essentially we did already talk about this but i'll just give you a, a brief explanation now obviously for one overlap you're going to have the two wingers cutting inside so they're the ones who are going to be into those more crossing situations that's why they're going to be um, overlapping pretty much on the touch line like we say they're going to be as wide as possible they will create that width of the team um, and then you can get them into those situations which is going to be very very handy one thing i will say that you might notice in the gameplay is that here we we do of course have kazawa at left back and this is a position that they've really struggled with throughout you know really for years i mean they've had before this they had Juan Bernat, they had uh maxwell uh they had luca digne for a bit they've really struggled to nail this position darren um, and it shows in game as well you know he's, he's got quite low stamina only 72 stamina so as you you will see in the game you know um it's quite a demanding role they're covering a lot of ground doing a lot of running high intensity and you know his stamina can't keep up with that so if you are playing as PSG, um, do bear that in mind. You know, perhaps you you're either looking to sign someone on um, uh, career mode, or perhaps you go with someone else entirely. A um, couple of players who can play at left back, such as um, Kera or Diallo, obviously not natural left back. So obviously you will want to um, bear that in mind. Otherwise, you could go with someone like Dagba, who is of course a right back, but you might just want to put a, a square peg in a round hole there. Uh, moving on to the holding midfielders next, um, they've both got the same role, so it um, doesn't really matter which one we look at here, but you've got Verratti and Idrissa Gay. Now, obviously, in real life, they're playing a slightly different role, um, and you just want to try and replicate that in-game if you can. Now, with Idrissa Gay, obviously, he's that aggressive defensive minor midfielder. That is his job, and when he wins a ball, he'll lay it off quickly to the surrounding players, the wing-backs, Verratti, etc., any attackers who, who might be in front of him. Whereas with, say, Marco Verratti, or it might be someone like Paredes, um, you know, you've got a couple of options there. Um, you've got more of a, a sort of a deep playmaker, um, and it's worth bearing that in mind, really. So you've got one player who's that more defensive-minded uh, mid uh, midfielder who who can be that rock and that protection in front of the defence, and then you've also got Verratti, who yes, he's still very good defensively, and that's why he does play this deeper role. But he's more of that progressive player. You can get him onto the ball more. You can look to spring. Um, you know defense splitting passes from him and 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 get your attackers running in and, and creating that movement feeding off his passes so do just bear that one in mind as well we will suggest that in these suitable players as for the roles we've got cut passing lanes on both you know man marking doesn't really work on this game anyway often the uh, the midfielders will get caught napping on the edge of the area so you know don't pay too much attention that to to that um plus they do have more of a lane press anyway rather than man to man which is something a little bit different from the bielsa sort of tree that we did mention earlier um you know that's more bielsa's thing but in this case they do have more of a lane press and with attacking support we have them both on stay back while attacking like we say one's a sort of aggressive defensive midfielder and the other one's sort of that deep lying playmaker so you don't want them to commit forward the fullbacks will overlap and they can then protect um, the fullbacks, so the space that they leave and, and vacate, etc. So you've really got four defensive players here with the two centre backs and the holding mids who can offer that protection um, when they need to, when all your players go forward. So that's it for the um, well, six defensive, seven defensive players, if you want to call that. Uh, we will now move on to the four attackers. So um, first things first, we're going to start off with Moise Ken. And, and like I said earlier in the video, um, you know. Different personnel will come in depending on on the game. You know, sometimes he's got Icardi at front, sometimes Neymar's on the left, sometimes uh, Draxler's on the left. Uh, you know, Mbappe might be playing on the wing. So, 
in this case, we are going for this one where, where Moise Ken would be on, on the left and Di Maria on the right. So in this case, we've got him on comeback on defence and we've got Di Maria on comeback on defence as well. And we've also got them both on cut inside. That's how you get them into the most advanced positions possible. Obviously, Moyes Ken is right footed, Di Maria is left. So you're getting them onto the stronger foot and it's another um, goal threat which you will see we do utilize to our advantage um, however there is a change in the movement that they provide with Moise again we've got him on getting behind so that's how we can utilize his pace as much as possible however with Di Maria obviously he's not quite as fast um, as Moise Ken and also just generally likes to be on the ball more um, so in that case what we have is we have him come short and he can pick up the ball more. Florenzi will be overlapping, so he has that run on the outside. Or he can come inside into the players who are providing a lot of movement, such as Neymar, such as Mbappe, etc. Um, and he can do it that way. So you've got that nice versatile um, sort of balance between your two wingers there. And finally, we're supporting crosses, as we alluded to earlier, in the tactics section with the uh, players in box. We have both of the wingers on getting to the box of crosses. That's how you can support that uh, sort of four-man attack um, with all of them getting into the box. Moving on to Neymar now, and what I really want to say about this first off is, you know, one of the reasons I picked this sort of setup and this team to 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 base the tactics on um, is because of having Neymar in his central position. Anyone who watched the first leg between PSG and Bayern Munich in the uh, Champions League um, will sort of know what I mean. Um, it was pretty much inspired by that because his performance in that game in this central role was absolutely magnificent and props to uh, Pochettino because it needs I don't know why more people haven't thought of this and sort of gone with this as a permanent feature because it's it's so so um, just just a match made in heaven really just to get him into those central areas he can go right he can go left he's so technically gifted just absolutely fantastic it's just a different dynamic of having a player like that in the central areas so really really fun to play with um, so with his roles defensive support first off we've actually got basic defense support and it's something that you'll see them often employ particularly when he plays in this central role but in general he's not tracking back all the time you know you don't want him wasting all of his energy ultimately you want him to be in an advanced position when he picks up the ball so that you can then hurt the opposition on the counter attack so that's why you only want him to come back sporadically when you absolutely need it um, and just save his his energy levels and his stamina a little bit with support on crosses, we have this on getting to the box of the cross, as we already spoke about, so we don't need to go into that too much. We have the four in the box. And then with positioning freedom, we have them on free roam. And this is what makes it such an enjoyable um, sort of role for him to play and, and to play with on FIFA. It's just the fact that he can pick up the ball anywhere. He'll, he'll roam the attacking third. Um, and just create as much movement as possible and it's really really fun to play with so you can get him onto the ball um, as often as possible and in lots of different positions and and he's just he's just a threat in all positions because um, you know five star skill moves five star weak foot such an all-rounded attacking player um, so you can't really go wrong there um, and yeah so that's it for Neymar finally we round off with the young prodigy Kylian Mbappe so, um, with the support runs, we have them on drift wide. And the reason why we have them on drift wide is that a lot of time, particularly when they're looking to hurt teams on the counter attack, what you'll find is that most space will be in the wide areas because the opposition fullbacks have obviously committed. So, that's really how you're going to be able to exploit his pace and create as much movement as possible by him drifting wide. And you can couple that in with getting behind as well. He's obviously looking to run in behind, utilize that deadly pace that he has um, to exploit the opposition um, and that's really how you couple that with him on drift wide you've got Neymar roaming Di Maria um, coming short and then Moise Ken cutting inside and getting in behind you've got so much movement there that can just create a lot of mismatch options for the opposition and it'll be a nightmare for all of them to deal with so it's very very handy and finally with defensive support we have him on stay forward so he can again save his energy but also be that out ball be that outlet again it's worth bearing in mind that you will have possession for a lot of the time you should have more of the possession um, at least they do obviously it's a little bit harder on FIFA because particularly when you're playing the AI um, they, they just sort of dally about on the ball and don't really do much so it's hard for you to, to keep control of the ball all that time but um, you know you should also bear that in mind you shouldn't be having to trap back much anyway 
Um, so, yeah, that really just rounds it off for the instructions and the tactic in general, guys. One that I really enjoy playing with, as mentioned. If you've got any questions about the system, um, about the tactic, etc., please do get at me in the comment section and I can answer any questions that you may have. Keep your suggestions coming in as well. Um, we really do appreciate that. Be sure to go and subscribe to my second channel, Brahma Ball, where we cover real football. The link to that is in the description. Um, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. And I know we are going to finish it off there. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.